Hi everyone, thank you for watching Wine Geometry TV. This is Sylvan, your host, and this is episode 102. Today we're going to talk about the most famous region in the world, Bordeaux. I'm talking about the most famous region for wines, of course. Bordeaux has a lot of specificities that we're going to have to talk step by step about today. Um, so we're going to talk about the regions first in Bordeaux, the grapes that are used, and then obviously, as usual, we're going to taste a wine together and I'm going to show you where to buy it. So let's get started. Bordeaux is made of five sub-regions actually, with five different kinds of soils and therefore five different kinds of wines at the end. So when you're drinking a Bordeaux wine, there's actually many uh, differences between one wine uh, and another. Most of you all uh, know the wines from Saint-Emilion Grand Cru uh, because it rings a bell. The Grand Cru uh, gives a sort of a classification to it and a sort of quality label to it. But that's just one of the Grand Cru. So I'm going to explain to you step by step how it goes. Saint-Emilion, for example, is one of the sub-regions called Le Libournais. So that's the more far east uh, of the Garonne River. That's the river that comes down uh, along the Bordeaux wines. So it's uh, downstream, okay, on the, on the Garonne River. The most famous is Saint-Emilion. You have others, of course, as well. Other regions include Midoc, which is probably the most famous. That's the left bank of uh, the Garonne River with famous castles like Chateau Margaux. On the right bank, you will have Côte de Blais, Okay, so the difference between left bank and right bank is the soil. On the left bank, the Bordeaux wines will receive a more uh, stony and pebbly uh, soil. So the grapes that you're going to use on this side of the bank is going to be Cabernet Sauvignon. That's the grape that evolves better uh, for this soil. Cabernet Sauvignon being obviously the most famous grape worldwide. And on the right bank, you're going to have uh, a more clay, uh, limestone kind of soil. And that favors the development of Merlot. So Merlot, which most of you know as well, uh, is something a little bit more silky, uh, smooth, that is paired with pretty much everything. Uh, so actually, when it comes to Bordeaux uh, wines, most of them are associations of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and actually other grapes as well. Coming back to the regions, the fourth region is Pessac Léonien. So Pessac Léonien comes from the region Grave uh, with uh, some very famous castles uh, like uh, Pape Clément, for example. And then the last region is Entre Deux Mers, or in English, Between the Two Seas. So it's actually because in Bordeaux, the Garonne River separates into two sides uh, towards the um, bottom of it. So between those two rivers, you have also um, quite a, a big bunch of uh, wine yards there. They're not the most famous ones, but they're still very tasty. Now looking at the grapes, or cépage in French. The grapes that you're using, I already mentioned for uh, left bank, right bank with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. There are two other predominant cépages or grapes, which are Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. So let's say now about the hints or uh, the scents that you should have when you're drinking these uh, wines from different grapes. In a Cabernet Sauvignon, that is the most tannic uh, sort of grape. Many people will tell you, many beginners will tell you, uh, I don't like Cabernet Sauvignon, it's too aggressive, it's too tannic, and so forth, and so on. Uh, that's probably because they tried a too strong concentration of Cabernet Sauvignon in the wine, uh, because uh, out of Bordeaux in other countries, um, like Australia or uh, Chile, they can do wines with 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, which tends to be a little bit too aggressive, too manly, uh, if we can uh, talk like this. Uh, so it's not for the first uh, beginner to try. Um, it's sense or be uh, more of uh, bell pepper or uh, vanilla. Actually, 
uh, let's make a point about this. How come a grape can give sense of other aromas like bell pepper, vanilla, or some people will tell you that it's uh, strawberries, raspberries, black currants, etc. Well, actually, during the phase of development, okay, we call it uh, phenolic development of the grape, so where the skins actually evolve uh, by taking the sun and the water, uh, there's a chemical process that goes uh, in the heart of the grape, uh, which uh, gives it some other properties as only the grape taste. So, in turn, some grapes will develop some more uh, sweet notes, some more acid notes, and will give uh, also vanilla uh, flavors, uh, raspberry flavors, and everything I've mentioned uh, just now. So, if you're looking at Merlot wines, for example, uh, you'll get uh, something smoother, uh, usually it's something silky, okay? Uh, whereas when you're using Cabernet Franc, it'll give you more a raspberry uh, finish, something maybe leathery, okay, uh, on that kind of notes. So the interesting part of Bordeaux wines is its complexity, because as I said, most of the wines are made of an alloy or a combination of a few cépages. So if we look into the great wines, for example, of Bordeaux, uh, maybe Chateau Margaux, right, or Chateau Rothschild, uh, these grapes are more based on Cabernet Sauvignon, maybe 80 to 85% Cabernet Sauvignon, and the rest of Merlot. But uh, more uh, universal wines, easier wines to drink, will be a little bit more based on Merlot and then Cabernet Sauvignon. That's the case of the wine I'm presenting to you today. This wine is, and I'm going to show you here, Chateau Begadane. Okay, it's a 2013 wine, um, so it's quite young, uh, but very tasty. Um, it's a Midoc, okay, so Midoc is, again, left bank of the Garonne River. So uh, I'll taste it again uh, with you guys, but uh, I know that it's a 60% Merlot, 30% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5% Cabernet Franc, and 5% Petit Verdot. It gives it a lot of complexity because, as I said, you're co combining different kinds of grapes uh, that are having different kinds of flavors. So the depth uh, of the wine is great. It. Is a cru bourgeois. What does that mean? Most of you have heard about Grand Cru, maybe Premier Cru, which is First Cru. Right? So cru means growth, okay? Uh, there is a classification, uh, let's go back into history, of 1855 of the greatest wines of Bordeaux. It gives a sort of, again, classification, labeling, some sort of uh, branding. Or so quality. that's why you can hear about Saint-Emilion Grand Cru. Uh, it's the acknowledgement of a certain uh, quality that was based back then in 1855. So as of today, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not a big fan of uh, Saint-Emilion Grand Cru. I think it's overrated. I think for the branding, they overprice it. Um, but I guess some of them are still good quality. I, on the other hand, prefer to go discover other types of wines that are maybe underrated. This is clearly one of them. So a Cru Bourgeois is an other kind of appellation, another label uh, that has been created to guarantee a sort of quality examination of the quality of these products. This was also in the 19th century, cru bourgeois, okay, so bourgeois uh, for those who don't speak French uh, is a social status, okay, in the 19th century, uh, and it was uh, compared to cru paysan, which is uh, farmer's growth, okay, so it, depends on, it depended on uh, who was actually growing the wine, who was the winemaker. And there was also cru artisan, uh, so the worker. So the wines were classified according to the status of the landowner. So this Cru Bourgeois is really a beaut. It's fantastic wine. And to be able to better appreciate uh, the wine, we always have to keep in mind how we're going to rate it and what we're supposed to expect in a wine. So here you're gonna see a global picture of wine geometry, okay? Why wine is geometry? and what it has to respect. Great representation of wine as geometry. 
a good wine should always have acidity, sweetness, and astringency in its taste. But it shouldn't have too much of one or the other, otherwise it would be unbalanced. That's why the great wines are located right in the middle of that triangle. For those of you who don't yet understand what tannic means, uh, it's quite obvious on this uh, picture. Tannic, it's uh, almost going to rough or to too bitter. A tannin is what you feel uh, when you put a bag of tea too long in your water. Okay, you'll have this uh, roughness coming out on your palate because of the leaves. Okay, or because of the skins of the fruits. That's what a tannin is, and in turn. A too tannic wine is something that is not appreciable because it stays and uh, it's rough on your palate. Let's give it a try. I love this sound. All right, so as usual, we swirl the wine, okay, to actually liberate the flavors, the scents, the aromas. That are coming out of the wine okay they need to express themselves then you put your nose fully into it to give it a strong smell okay so this has really soft uh tannins in in the nose uh, i love the colors as well i mean it's something that maybe i've been neglecting but you should really look at the colors the colors are uh, purple i mean a silky purple okay it looks really smooth from the beginning so I'm expecting something that's going to be really smooth in the mouth, that's going to stay a long time, a very, very soft taste, and I'm expecting to have a lot of different hints in it. Notice that I never spit wine. I think it's a waste. I don't bring my spit bowl here. First of all, because I don't think that's polite. Second of all, because I love the wine. All right, so the taste of it uh, is quite genius. Uh, they've managed to do a great mix of Cabernet Sauvignon, of Merlot, of Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. The result is quite complex with, I see a dominant actually of black currant. Okay. Um, I think it's very rich, uh, not too rough on the palate. I still have it in my mouth. It's disappearing slowly but surely. So it's not uh, staying those 45 seconds as expected, but for an entry-level wine uh, like this Chateau Bigadene at $42 a bottle, I think it's a beaut, and I really think you should try it so out. So now we're looking at the rating. I don't know you guys, but when I'm drinking this wine, I feel like I'm in a spa in Thailand, having a great scrub and a wrap of chocolate around my body. It's so silky and smooth. I just love it. So if you remember my rating from last time, out of 20 points, we're going to rate five things, each on four points. First of all, we're gonna check if there's no default in the wine, if there's not a too strong alcoholic taste, if the smell is not way out of um, what we're expecting. We're going to rate the smell, then the taste, then the length, and the I personally think it's a great wine uh, for the price it is. It has no default, certainly not. Uh, smell is great. Uh, the taste is quite complex. Mm, I really like the after swallow. Uh, it lacks maybe a little bit of length, so I'd probably give it somewhere uh, between a 16 and a 17 out of 20, which is a very good note uh, for a wine at this so price. As usual, here's a link to buy it. And as they say, a wine a week keeps your palate unique.